Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another weekly recap for Old School RuneScape. In the weekly recap, I'd like to go over any news related to the Elizars community this week. Now, this week, we are actually not getting a regular game update. However, on the 9th of June, there were a few updates still, but no official game update. However, later in the day, there is going to be a leadership live stream where, uh, where they're going to be talking about the next couple months of old school. Uh, so I expect that to be very interesting. So I think we still have a lot to talk about. As always, if you guys enjoy the weekly recap, I really always appreciate it. If you leave the video like, it really does help my video get recommended to other people. So uh, they can also enjoy RuneScape news. Even if they don't play RuneScape, I still want them to watch it. Thanks again, guys, and let's get started. Now, unlike a normal update video, I'm going to be starting kind of at the end. First up, we're going to be pulling something from the weekly Q&A. Now, probably one of the bigger things from the Q&A is a mini roadmap for the next three or four months. Now, most of the things on here we do already know about. However, now they put together an easy to visualize graphic uh, showing when they expect these pieces of content to be released. Now sometime in July there's going to be a big content reveal uh, for what's to come for the rest of the year or the next six months. However that is still to come. Uh, so May is over but the things they changed in May are Temporos, the game room update, and the main piece of content would be the clans release. Now for June we are going to be getting A Kingdom Divided which is coming next week, Chambers of Zarek changes from poll number 75, some equipment rebalancing, so whether that is going to be the blowpipe or one of the other changes or if it's maybe just going to be another opinion blog or a poll blog or whatever, we're going to be getting more stuff in June for equipment rebalancing. And finally here we're going to be getting Fasani's Nightmare. Now exciting news in July, it looks like we're going to be getting combat achievements. Now with most of the equipment rebalancing going to be completed at that point, we finally can get combat achievements, something I've been looking forward to for a long time and it was kind of sad they delayed it. Now there's a lot of stuff coming out in July, we're going to be getting a night at the theater v2, which is essentially just going to be reworking a night at the theater to have more of a story and narrative behind it, kind of just reworking it to be the way it should have released in the first place. Now also in July we are going to be getting the first bit of wilderness changes. Now in the live stream they don't allude to what those are going to be. They do mention that they are going to be significant changes however they're not really going to be new content just changes to mechanics or incentives to make the wilderness more fun for everyone. Also in July we're going to be getting some changes to Theater of Blood from poll number 75 as well as changes to the gauntlet. Also, there will be some Slayer changes, which is going to round out most of poll number 75. In the finalized July, there's going to be a bit more equipment rebalancing, so maybe stuff like Black Dehyde. And probably most exciting of all is going to be the Summer Reveal Stream. As I mentioned, it's going to be an in-depth roadmap for the next six months. Now, one thing I've kind of noticed this year and kind of last year is Jagex has been a lot more conservative with the information that they release, and I understand why they're doing that. Stuff like Winter 2017 with mobile and other updates that they have planned to release but get delayed and not released on time. That's happened a lot and I'm sure it's stressful to do that. Now with that said, in my opinion, I would be happier with more transparency even if the content gets delayed. I feel like for just so long now, we haven't had any new information about new content. It's just been constantly, we have exciting stuff on the way or some other variant of that. I think if Jagex was just a bit more transparent on the unreleased content they're working on, maybe players wouldn't feel like there's a big content drought, or that we're getting no new content. I don't know, just my opinion. Now after July, there's a later section. No defined release date for this, but we have stuff like Group Ironman, which they have said we're getting in 2021. Uh, the Wilderness Boss Rework, which I'm very excited for. Uh, there's going to be a new Deadman Mode tournament, which is apparently going to be drastically different than the other ones they have ran. They are also looking to get Leagues 3 out in 2021. Now while I am happy we're getting Leagues 3 in Deadman mode, I personally really think we need some main game content. Regardless though, I am happy to get any information at this point, and I am excited for that summer stream. Now, as I was mentioning, on June 9th, there wasn't an official update for OSRS. However, the game's servers were taken down for a substantial amount of time on June 9th. Uh, in a news post, Jagex states that the game will be offline as of 8 a.m. BST on Wednesday, June 9th to conduct essential upgrades and maintenance. Uh, you'll be unable to access the new areas, the forums, high scores, or your website account. Uh, so as far as I'm aware, I think this is a pre-patch for A Kingdom Divided, and maybe a few things for RS3 as well. However, with that said, on June 9th, there were still a few hot fixes and changes, uh, specifically to the new Theater of Blood modes. Now, first to appear, the difficulty mode that you were on in the Theater of Blood is now displayed when completing a room. They have now reduced the amount that the bandages in story mode will boost your magic level by. 
Now, quite a few of the hotfixes do primarily focus on making the Theater Blood hard mode at least doable in a solo, albeit very hard. They have now disabled the ramp damage from Maiden in raids with only one player, as the mechanic cannot be avoided at that scale. Uh, they have increased the health of the Blood Nalicus at Maiden, uh, specifically in story mode. Uh, Nalicus in hard mode has now had the wave delay reduced. Uh, Nalicus has also had some of these stats buffed as they were totally inaccurate, as well as a few other fixes. Now, Nalicus in story mode has received a few similar changes and a few different changes. Once again, the wave delay has been reduced, and they've also capped the maximum amount of Nalicus that can exist at the same time, specifically in story mode, uh, which will hopefully make it faster for those who are comfortable with the waves, and they've also reduced some of the recoil damage. Uh, for Zarpus in story mode, the attack speed has been changed to mimic that of regular Tob. I have heard some complaints regarding this because having different attack speeds can be very confusing and makes it hard to actually learn the mechanics properly. Now for Verzik, when you're doing hard mode, uh, the lightning attack now deals the correct amount of damage, and the lightning has also had its maximum bounce range increased by 50%, as well as there's been a few bug fixes and minor quality of life changes. Now Verzik in story mode has been buffed quite a bit, uh, their phase 3 health has been increased by 200, the amount of damage that the tornadoes do, the acid bomb, and the nylakids has all been increased, uh, the stun duration has been increased, however a few things have also been made a bit weaker as well as a bit more doable in a solo. Uh, so actually quite a few changes for a hot fix, overall it looks like uh, story mode is actually a little bit more challenging now so for those who are maybe waiting for a few changes, well maybe you should have done that before. <laughs> And that is all for game changes this week. Alright, so next up here, I want to have a look at the new Shazing House rework, which was just released this week. Now, I do believe this is coming out with a Kingdom Divided, although it is possible it's coming out at a later date. They haven't really specified that too much. Now, Mod West has been slowly reworking all of the different houses in Karen because when they released, uh, well, the map looked quite awkward, and slowly over the years they have been bringing it up to snuff. Now if you guys remember the Hasidious rework from a few years back, we got stuff like the Forthos Dungeon, a completely new main town, the Tithe Farm was made like a thousand times smaller, just a bunch of nice changes. Uh, so here's a new layout of the Shazian House rework. Now if we do look at them side by side, you can notice that there are still a lot of the same things, however the layout has been made a little bit less linear, uh, less boxy, and in general things have been made a little bit smaller. Uh, from the original one we still have the Graveyard of Shadows, however that has kind of been moved to a new location. The Combat Ring, the Infirmary, and the War Tent, all the same. Now there are of course a few new things, there is a giant pit which Mod West was talking about on stream, it's just a big pit. Uh, with a bunch of giants in them. Now there are a few things here that I'm not sure about yet. There is the Runes of Mora. Unclear whether that is going to be cosmetic or it's going to be another dungeon. There's also now the Shazia Runes. Again, it's unclear whether that has anything or if it's just a cosmetic area. Now over by the giant pit, a little bit to the southwest, there's also a dungeon sign. So I'm kind of curious to know what that's about. However, overall, we do have to keep in mind that this is mainly a graphical rework, so there's probably not going to be a ton of new content. However, if we got something at the scale of the Forthos runes, I'd be pretty happy. Uh, so with the Shazian House rework coming soon, uh, pretty much the entire southern half of Zaya is looking quite a bit nicer. So after Piscarillias, Arceus, and Lovakenge, it will pretty much all be done, and, and Zaya will be graphically and content-wise a lot more rich. Now finally here, let's do a quick recap of the Q&A. Alright, we're going to show you some player created content, exclamation mark UGC if you want to see this for yourself. But um, wow, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is something. Holy. Um, Holy. <laughs> this is from Kutadox who modeled a blue belt and, and says, I hope you like <laughs> it. Take it off the screen. <laughs> it's very no, good. No. It's very good. I respect, I respect the art. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Next one. When will the PvP blog be released? They are currently in the process of writing it, and they're aiming to release it next week. When are we going to get the account security update that you promised so long ago now? Well, unfortunately that has been pushed back. Currently they have been under sustained server attacks recently, so all of that personnel has been focused on the server attacks. They do apologize for the delay, and they are going to get it out eventually. Are there any chances that you can make it possible to scout raids on the vanilla client? Yes, they would love to make that change. They don't think there's any reason nowadays to not be able to scout raids. When it comes to ranged meta changes, there is a focus on reining in power creep, however other MMOs accept it. Why are you so focused on stopping power creep? Now they do feel like most players don't want power creep, and they don't think that having Abandos Tacits being worth 500k is going to be healthy for the game, 
or going to make players happy. Now that's not to say that there's not going to be some power creep in old school runescape, it's inevitable, but they are going to try to stop it as best they can. For other MMOs, having power creep might not be such a big deal, however in old school runescape they do think it would be a detriment. And finally here, once again, can we do a survey about adding a new skill? Now what they want to do next time is do a straight up opinion polling game asking whether players would be open to any new skill. Most of the moderation team do think a new skill could work in old school, but they just have to find the right one. Anyway guys, that is it for the Q&A and for the weekly recap. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Now before I go here, I'm going to give a massive thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. A huge thank you to Wolf the Hunt, Colin Corley, Timothy Chen, Guy Fox, Ocelot, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon tier. As always, you guys are awesome. Also a massive thank you to Hunter Durand, Lord Dojin, all things gaming, yo yo sub 89, need my pills, birdbot, and base titch for all being subscribed at the runite tier. Thank you guys so much. As always, if you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. You can get access to my video release schedule, get immortalized in all of my future videos, and of course, get a custom role in my Discord server. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.